Right, before we begin, in the interest of full disclosure, I don't actually know what the real name of this trick is. I've been doing it for years. I originally got it from an old Hans Lindgren part, I think. Um, and I always called it the Swedish finger flip, because there's a trick in Gunther's book that in the sequence looks much the same. Well then Robert Wagner pointed out I was wrong, and that trick is actually grabbed at the side and kind of some weird hand flip variation. So yeah, don't know what this is called, and I've asked around and no one else seems to know. So for the sake of this video, I'm calling it an inward finger flip. But if anyone who was skating in the 70s and 80s knows what it was called originally, get in touch and I'll change the title below and hopefully that will reflect, you know, some actual history and the origins of this trick or something along those lines. So if the title doesn't say inward finger flip, that's what it's supposed to be called. And you can ignore basically every time I use that name in this video. Cool. Let's crack on. Unlike most front-handed finger flip variants, this one you're not actually going to be in line with the board. You want to be standing at more of a 35 to 45 degree angle, with your back foot just on the pocket of the tail, right on the side, and the front foot about halfway down. Don't point it straight forward, kind of angle it just slightly. This should give you the right position for the takeoff. Because of the fact this trick rotates backside, there's a tendency by most people to grip it at the side and throw it through the flip. Trying to avoid that. You want your fingers underneath and your thumb on top, just like a straight finger flip. This will give you a much cleaner takeoff and flip, and it will also help you get that upwards lift that you need to get started. Going here, while it might get the rotation, has more of a tendency to throw the board away from you. Avoid that if possible. Just like any rolling finger flip, you're going to want to ball up pretty tightly, grabbing the nose dead in the middle and crouching down ready for the takeoff. The difference between this and a regular rolling finger flip though is that I find this much easier to take off from. I can get much more pop from here. And that becomes useful because this board is going to go much more vertical on this inward finger flip than a regular rolling one. The actual mechanism of the inward finger flip is much the same as the rolling finger flip. Just like with a straight rolling finger flip, we're going to get in position, grab the nose, roll, go to tail and take off from there. The difference is that we're going to scoop the ball backside as we take off, which is why we've got our foot right on this very edge of the board. What's actually going to happen, instead of scooping the board around this way, which is more or less impossible, your arm doesn't want to go that far across the body, you're going to pull it more end over end. Anyone who's ever done a press foot before should understand this motion. So this foot is effectively acting as a block. It's just going to stop the board and let the board come up and over this way. The end goal should be something that looks slightly end over end, but still obviously a backside rotation. The nice thing about this finger flip is it doesn't actually require a lot of work. Providing your feet are in the right place and you've got a clean takeoff, most of it's done for you in the first millisecond of the trick. You want to just make sure you get a clean takeoff and lift it up cleanly at a slight angle. Once you get to there, you can basically just let let go of the board, let it fall through the rest of the trick, get out of its way, extend your feet and put it down. You really don't need to go too hard on this one. Again, much like the pressure flip, you might find this easier to begin with, with both feet facing the nose. The reason for this is that the board will escape out from under the feet much faster. But the problem is that you've got a long way to go from this forward facing position to a regular riding position. And being as your arm is kind of acting like an anchor is holding you here, that becomes quite awkward in midair. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. You know, I landed it fine, but it doesn't feel very good. Moreover, it gets more difficult as I'm going backwards. That's not a clean position to take off from. If you can hybridize that position and a regular landing position, you get kind of that 35 to 45 degree angle that I was talking about earlier. That will feel much cleaner in midair, and it won't tie you up as much. You also get a more rotational flip. It's less prone to going sh just straight end over end that way. Try it both ways, but seriously, I highly recommend that slightly diagonal stance. Just to really drill this home, just to really reiterate a point, that foot position becomes even more crucial if you're going to do variations of this later on. For instance, one of my favourites right now is a half cab version of this, which really won't work with that straight footing. Yeah. 
The most common mistake with this trick will be landing on the tail and or just pure falling off the back of it. It still happens to me occasionally. In fact, it happened a couple of times while I was recording these clips. Now, the reason for that is that the takeoff makes you want to lean backwards. But every time you do that, you're actually pushing the board out in front of you, which means you've got nowhere to land but on the tail. <laughs> it's hyper exaggerated, but that's exactly what happens. With a lot of these tricks, you've got to think of your body as a lever. Whatever you're doing with your shoulders is mirrored at the bottom end of your body. So if you lean back up here, all you're doing is pushing the board out in front of you. It's very important to keep your weight forward. Lean forward slightly and you'll roll away from this clean pretty much every time. Another problem you might run into with these is the board not quite spinning enough. You'll tend to come up short, land slightly crooked. Now, the reason for that is because of the fact that it starts primarily vertical. It's hard to get that clean, full rotation. The solution is really twofold. First of all, because of the way your foot's positioned here, as you take off, you can push back slightly on your back foot to get it spinning a little bit more backside. You don't want to over rely on the back foot, this is still very much a finger flip trick. If you use the back foot too much, you might kick the board away. But just a little bit of a nudge will help get it that bit more of a spin. Now, the second solution is the one that I favor, which is just go faster. You'll notice that in a lot of these clips, because I'm trying to fit it within the frame, I'm rolling quite slowly. And as I land, I lose a lot of what little speed I had. Going faster into it, helps you power through any slight imperfections in the landing and roll away smoother. Going faster is always the way forward. Much nicer. <laughs>